I'm Ross Tokash, mental health counselor specializing in gamers. Today we're talking about grinding. Specifically, why will we spend hours grinding in games, but not so much in real life? This video comes from a subscriber request. So thank you, Sammy. And please, like and subscribe if you enjoy this video. Let me tell you a quick story about a young me. When I was a kid, my father would take us fishing on a dock every now and again. It'd be a nice father-son moment for about mm, five minutes. And then I'd say, I'm bored, stand up and throw my fishing rod into the water and walk away. I did this just about every time we went fishing. Now, not too long ago, I was playing Ghost of Tsushima and I would run around a huge map gathering supplies so I could upgrade my armor and give myself a goofy hat. Now I ask myself the age old question, why am I like this? Why will I and other gamers grind for hours on end for relatively useless things? But we won't do the same in real life. This might be more apparent for people in school. You might play a lot of video games like League of Legends, Fortnite, or Destiny 2 for upgrades and increase your level or rank, but when it's time to do homework, clean your room, or do whatever chores around the house, it's like pulling teeth. Well, let's break this video down in a few parts and try to answer the question, why will we grind in video games but not grind in real life? Let's get the obvious out of the way first. Gaming is fun. I tell people this all the time. If it's a competition between homework or house chores versus video games, the games are going to win every time because they're fun. It's like if you come to a fork in the road, one sign reads, puppy and pizza gathering, and the other sign says, hot coals in the face. Puppies, greater than hot coals. It's an unfair fight. But what other things are at play here psychologically? One reason is because video games are designed to utilize opera conditioning and intermittent positive reward or reinforcement. Video game design has really taken a liking to the work of BF Skinner. Bias alert, I'm not a fan of BF Skinner. I don't know how great his work has been for actually helping people, but it sure has helped businesses make a lot of money. But maybe I'm being cynical. Okay, I'm definitely being cynical. But in regards to operant conditioning and intermittent positive reward, you're presented with a task and you're rewarded for doing that task. The reward makes you want to keep doing the thing. But when the reward is intermittent, meaning it doesn't happen every time, this increases the probability that you'll continue doing the task. Intermittent reward, you see this more with loot boxes. You grind and you grind and you grind. Maybe you get the special outfit or the skin, maybe you don't. If you don't get it, you keep grinding till you do or become too frustrated to continue. Think slot machines. So with operant conditioning, you see this more in most video games where there's a thing you're challenged to do, then you do it, and you get the reward which can be a level up, V-Bucks, emotes, skins, you know, whatever. You grind, and you know what you're getting. This is important. There is a clear path to the thing you're trying to get. It takes away the unpredictability of what you're doing. That is comforting for some people. Life does not offer this peace of mind or luxury. There's so many unpredictable things in life. You can study for hours and still not get a good grade. You can put yourself out there and still have a hard time making friends or finding a partner. You can diet and exercise and still not lose weight and become frustrated with the whole process. Compare that life experience with something like Animal Crossing or Stardew Valley. In these worlds, life is chill, predictable. And I know if I go over to the river to catch a fish, I'm gonna catch a darn fish and it's guaranteed. Younger me would have saved my parents a lot of money on lost fishing rods if real life fishing came with a guarantee like this. My next point will contrast with games like Dark Souls, where people will grind in what I consider as horrible experiences. I hate the Souls games. And I got halfway through Sekiro, got turned into hamburger meat for the 47th time by a headless ape throwing poop at me, and I refuse to get good. But that doesn't mean that other games don't give people a sense of accomplishment by getting good. In my opinion, getting good is another way of saying it's safe to fail. Video games are a safe place to experience failure and loss without serious consequences. Again, life does not offer this same luxury. In life, there is greater risk in going for greater rewards. Starting a restaurant is a huge risk that can easily fail if you don't get Gordon Ramsay to come yell at you about lamb sauce. Asking someone out can feel horrible if you get rejected, and that happens to all of us. But in Sekiro or Dark Souls, you just lose the battle until you finally evade enough cheap one-shot kills to stand victoriously and triumph over your fallen foe, stating, There! That'll teach you to mess with someone with infinite lives and a lot of time on their hands. Failure is an uncomfortable and sometimes painful emotion. See also the concept of loss aversion, wherein we feel the effects of failure stronger than the effects of success in real life. 
Gaming appears to remove that feeling of loss aversion or at least temper it down a bit. And if someone can find a place in gaming where there is little to no risk of failure, then they will cling on to that like they're in a codependent unhealthy relationship. I'm not saying that gamers never go out and take risks and experience failure and learn valuable life lessons because of it. But I am saying that failing in a game is much more attractive and far less painful than failing in real life. And that's one reason we'll grind in a game and not grind in real life. The last thing I'll briefly mention in this video is the concept of sunken cost fallacy. Ever be in a bad relationship and think, I've spent way too much time and effort trying to make this relationship work and I cannot quit now. So you stay in the relationship hoping things will get better when of course they don't. I think this feeling follows us into video games as well. Sometimes gamers can get so caught up in 100%ing a game, ranking up, or getting an achievement that there's a feeling of, I can't stop now. It's hard to put the controller down and walk away once this happens. And the gamer needs to realize that it's time to walk away when the game stops being fun. And continuing the grind in a game or in real life for that matter is working against you when it stops being fun. So what do we learn in this video? Well, to put it bluntly, Video games are fun, relaxing, and social activity that offer a clear, understandable, and predictable path to rewards or feelings of accomplishment, confidence, and competence, while offering a safe place to experience failure with little to no consequences for the work that is put in. And generally speaking, real life is pretty crappy at doing this. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go back to clearing my 17th enemy encampment while I ignore the plumes of wildfire smoke out my window and two weeks of paperwork I'm procrastinating. Thanks for watching.